Welcome to Around the Sun. I'm your host, Keith Gill, Commissioner of the Sun Belt Conference. We're grateful you've joined us and hope you'll return often as we share stories from around the Sun Belt Conference. In conjunction with the 50th anniversary of Title IX, we're recognizing some of the pioneers and trailblazers of women's athletics from our Sun Belt Conference institution. Today, our special guest is Anne Dillon. Anne competed for Georgia State University from 1972 to 1974 as a scholarship athlete on the men's tennis team before a women's team was established. In her first season, she went 13-1, and with all of her wins coming against men at other universities. She also competed in outside events against women. In 1972 and in 1973, she won the Georgia Women's Collegiate Championship. Anne went on to Birmingham Southern College, where she spent 41 seasons as a head coach for both men's and women's tennis, and also served as BSC's Senior Woman Administrator. Anne is a member of the Georgia State University Athletics Hall of Fame. Anne, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Yeah, so we're really excited to talk to you, um, Anne, and particularly because you're such a trailblazer. You know, obviously, you know, playing on the men's team, you know, at Georgia State before there was a women's team, and you never even intended to become a student athlete. So talk about your path to joining the Georgia State University men's tennis team. Well, I had um, married my my husband of 51 years. And, oh, congratulations. Um, <laughs> thank you. And um, he was working for the Marriott Corporation in Atlanta um, as director of catering. And so I was looking for a place to get an undergraduate degree. And I looked at Agnes Scott and um, Georgia State because those were the two options at the time. And um, I chose Georgia State because of, of the options for classes and uh, being able to work a little bit in the afternoon and take classes in the morning. And um, that just worked out great. Yeah, and talk a little bit about your being a student athlete on the men's tennis team, particularly in the 70s, a woman on a men's team. Kind of walk us through that experience and, and, and kind of how it impacted your life. Well, it was, it was a great experience, really positive. I went into the, um, the tennis coach at uh, Georgia State, Francis Bridges, and um, I think he was a, a management professor at the time. And I just said, you know, I want to play tennis. Do you have any options? And he said, well, we don't have a women's program. You can um, try out for the men's program. You show up at Chastain Park and I'll let you play a few of the guys and we'll see where you fit in. So I think I played three men in one day <laughs> or three young men in one day and um, kind of earned my spot and then went back to Dr. Bridges as we called him at the time. And he, um, he said, well, you've got a spot on the team. You've got a scholarship. It'll pay your tuition and your books, but um, you're going to have to play number six because the guys can't take it if, if you're playing ahead of them. <laughs> I was like, that's fine. I'm happy with number six. So that's how it, it got started. And um, I had a wonderful experience. Just um, made a lot of friends, played some great tennis all over the Southeast and um, had a real good team experience. Yeah, and you went 13 and one. So obviously you were, you were winning some matches too. Yeah, 13 and one. Um, lost my last match of the season and balled like a baby when I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should just say you were 13 and 0 until the last match. And then, and yeah. then that way we can <laughs> even forget about that. we can forget about that first match. So right. now, you know, so obviously when we think about, you know, just um, you know, the 70s and um, women's athletics, obviously men's athletics. And it seems like your time on the men's tennis team was great. It seemed like it was welcoming and, um, and, and really helped you. Can you talk a little bit about that, particularly in the context of, of kind of the 70s and, and, um, and kind of what that was like? 
I had a wonderful experience. I didn't um, experience any resentment from the other team members or um, uh, problems. Now, I did, I have to be honest and tell you that one of the matches uh, that I, I won, technically, the, the guy defaulted to me because he said, you're a girl and I'm not playing a girl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Okay. Man, that's, yeah, that's, that's tough. But, you know, the great thing in athletics, winning is winning. So, you know, we take the victories however they come. Um, but obviously, sorry that you certainly had to go through that. Now, let's talk about it. It was okay bit. with me. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. It's good to win. So, now your older brother suggests you pursue a career in physical therapy, but you realize that wasn't for you. And I don't know if that's because your older brother suggested it. I know if my sister suggested anything to me, I'd automatically be like, I'm not doing that. So, it's an automatic. <laughs> But um, so talk about why coaching was a better fit for you than than maybe physical therapy. Well, I actually, um, you know, Georgia State had a wonderful PT program at the time with two years of undergraduate and then two years um, following clinicals and and uh, undergraduate work. And I actually applied and got accepted. But six months into it, I just realized that that was not where I was going to be happy. Okay. Um, I needed to be outdoors. I needed to be working in the sport that I loved. Okay. And that takes you to Birmingham Southern, right? Your sister is yes. attending there and, and talk us through that, you know, kind of transitioning from physical therapy to being the head coach at um, coach. Birmingham Southern. Right. Well, my husband started his own business in Birmingham. And um, so we moved here where we had family and my sister was attending Birmingham Southern and I had two older brothers that had attended Birmingham Southern. So okay. it was kind of a family thing. And um, they were looking to increase the athletic participation. At that time, they only had men's basketball and men's baseball and they wanted to start some other programs. And so my sister said to the president, um, well, my sister would be a great coach. You need to talk to her. So we um, we met and and he hired me. That's awesome. And I and I'm assuming you couldn't have a better agent or advocate than your sister. So that certainly helps. No, you well, I way, hope but. so. Yeah. <laughs> so and then you coached men and women at Birmingham Southern, and so I did for I, 25 years. Okay, and talk a little bit about that experience, and also how being on the men's team at Georgia State may have helped you with um, coaching men and women at um, Birmingham right. Southern? Well, growing up, I had played against boys the whole time. There were very few girls that participated in, in tennis at that time. Um, so I was very comfortable around men or boys or whatever you want to <laughs> call them at that point. Um, and, and I enjoyed certain parts of coaching men they're so much easier to make a team out of. They don't hold grudges. <laughs> um, whereas the girls, you know, if they had a fight with somebody, they were like, I never want to play doubles with her again. <laughs> guys were over it in a day. But then I enjoyed the parts of coaching women, what good communicators they were, and um, the personal aspects of that. So, Yeah. And so, and, and obviously, you know, folks don't want to talk legacy when they're talking about themselves, but you won um, almost 700 career matches as a coach. Um, you coach programs at NAIA, NCAA Division I, NCAA Division Three. You went to the NAIA National Championship every year. You coached at that level. Um, so what do, you, what do you hope your impact is on the sport of tennis, on women ath women's athletics, and on kind of the athletic program at Birmingham Southern? Well, I hope to encourage girls and women to um, start sports, stay with sports. I think it's such a positive impact on your life as far as confidence, um, physical well-being, and um, being on a team is such great work for future jobs, knowing how to work with people and um, 
and just being mature, prioritizing your time, knowing that you might have to let go and not go to a party and study and be ready to, to work out with your team. Yeah, there's no question that, you know, the things that you learn on the courts and fields just translates into your life, whether that's confidence, whether to your point it's maturity. Um, you know, sports has such a powerful impact on people. You know, it's, 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 it's great that folks have the opportunities to participate because they carry those through throughout their entire life. So now we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX, and obviously you didn't have the opportunity to impact to compete on a women's team, but so many people, so many female athletes have had that opportunity because of trailblazers like you, and obviously because of the law, um, you know, the, the Title IX law and the opportunities it opens. So talk about how, how you have seen Title IX kind of impact, you know, women's athletics and women's opportunities. Well, I just think it's it's fantastic because I think it, it it's affected it affects little girls who start in a sport at four years old and they know that they can if they want to pursue that uh, that sport in college and um, great opportunities for scholarships for women and, and girls now and you know that's that's fantastic. I just think it's it's um, so wonderful and you can see the impact because there's so many girls playing soccer and tennis and basketball and softball and all of these, these great sports. And uh, I just think it's wonderful. Yeah, and, and talk about just, you know, how important representation in sports and other areas of life are. You know, when you think about kind of all those impacts that you just, just talked about and what that means for women in roles, leadership roles, and, and you know, being president of the United States and, and running sports leagues and being head coaches of teams. And um, in some ways you can say that that starts from those opportunities um, that have come from, from Title IX and, um, and from laws like it. Sure, you, you, you gain confidence by, by participating in athletics. And then there's leadership opportunities, whether it's team captain or, or uh, you know, being um, elected to something in your athletic department. There's so many opportunities that come from sports that I think it's just um, really a positive thing. Okay, great. And so we're going to ask you one more question, lighthearted question. So now obviously your greatest sports memory is being on the Around the Sun podcast. So we're going to set that aside as a given. That's right. And besides Absolutely. that, give us a sense of maybe your your greatest sports memory. Oh, you and know it can what? Be more than one. My, my greatest sports memory. <laughs> um, well, obviously having the facility at Birmingham Southern named after me. Um, Probably shouldn't have been, but that was just longevity. No, <laughs> that's just that's hanging more than around longevity. for all those years. That that's a great memory. Um, to be honest, I love getting Christmas cards from all my players and showing their babies oh, and great. their children, and <laughs> even having some of them come back and bring their children to Birmingham Southern and hoping that they're going to be playing for them. Wow, that's outstanding. Now that that has to be fun, you know, because because you. You knew them when they were 18, 19 years old. Yes. And, and, yes. and watching that process must have been amazing. Yes. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, there were guys that I thought were going straight to prison, and they're <laughs> doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs now. So. <laughs> and they come back with their families, and I'm like, oh, okay. So <laughs> they're, they're going to make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they got to pass go and collect their $200 rather than going straight to jail and yes. in Monopoly um, terms. So, well, Ann, thanks so much for sharing your story with us. You dedicated your life to coaching college student athletes and creating opportunities um, for both male and female student athletes. So, and thanks to all our listeners for joining the podcast. We hope you'll continue to listen to our special Title IX series and tell others to check out um, Sunbelt Conference podcast as well. So thank you for much for listening to um, Around the Sun. Thank you.